Now, that's normally the only story about this movie that I tell audiences, but I've already confessed to you that I have a hard time focusing on the pain, and I gloss over it and just get to the positive thing. So tonight, in the spirit of self-improvement, I'm going to focus on the pain with you. <laughs> because before this one yes from this one movie, I got countless no's. Countless no's for two and a half years from different casting directors. So let's talk about that. <laughs> it all started one day when my manager reached out to me, and yes, I do have a manager. It just happened organically. I just reached that place in my career where I realized I was making approximately 15% too much money. So... <laughs> And he wanted me to be in film and television, so I obliged. Everyone thinks it's a very natural progression for a comedian to go from comedian to actor. It is not. Going from comedian to actor is like going from dairy farmer to actor. You know what I'm talking about? It's a big leap either way. And it's hard as an optimist, you know, to get all these no's from different casting directors because I can't spin it any way. I can't be like, I don't want to brag, but I've been rejected by some pretty powerful people. <laughs> you ever heard of Disney? They passed. <laughs> and they don't tell you when you don't get the part. They just released the show. <laughs> you know many times I've been watching Netflix, a show I audition for comes on, and I'm like, hey, I auditioned for that. I wonder if I'm on it. 20 minutes later, my wife's rubbing my back. I'm like, maybe I come on at the end. <laughs> I still have Netflix too, but now Netflix is just a subscription service to my broken dreams. <laughs> Some of these failed auditions weren't even my fault. I should never have been put up for them in the first place. Like the very first audition I ever did was for a Netflix crime drama called Seven Seconds, which in hindsight is funny because that's about how long my acting career lasted. <laughs> And they wanted me to audition for a tough, grizzled, New Jersey detective. <laughs> what? <laughs> this is not the face of a grizzled New Jersey detective, okay? This is the face of a man who goes to Michael's with his wife and likes it! <laughs> Eventually, my agents were like, come on, Matt, you gotta move to LA where the action's happening. And I didn't wanna leave. I didn't wanna move away from Canada. And they're like, come on, you gotta want it more than the next guy. I'm like, I've met the next guy. He wants it more than I do. <laughs> Just give it to him. He's living in his car. He needs this. So I'd fly out to LA periodically to take meetings and do auditions. I remember one time I went out there, they brought me to the Four Seasons, not to stay, to have breakfast. <laughs> And Brad Pitt was going to be there later that day. There were pictures of Brad everywhere, paparazzi lined up, big old red carpet. And in all sincerity, my agents looked at all that stuff. Then they looked at me and they went, next year, that's going to be you. <laughs> ha! Prove them wrong. <laughs> they didn't know I was not living Brad Pitt's lifestyle. I was not staying in Brad Pitt's hotel. I was staying in a motel that could have been called Brad's Pit. Do you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> it was disgusting. And it smelled so bad. I went to the front, I complained. I was like, I need to change rooms. And the guy's like, why? I'm like, cause my room smells really bad. And he just looked at me like, you can change rooms, but the smell's not gonna go away. The smell is bigger than all of us now. And to make matters worse, my first trip to LA, I arrived the day that Donald Trump was elected president of the United States of America. I don't know if you follow politics, but California was not too pleased. They had some concerns. I should say, for the record, I share those concerns. As a Mennonite, I cannot support someone who's anti-immigration. That's how we got here. <laughs> Plus, the only walls Mennonites put up are emotional. All right. <laughs> I had some horrible auditions when I was out there. I remember the worst one I ever had was for the show. Oh, I almost said what it was, too. I legally can't. 
I signed a whole non-disclosure thing and I can't. I can give you a hint what show it was. Uh, it's a very popular country music show named after a very popular country music city. <laughs> it's Nashville. Uh, Nashville. Did you guys hear that? Just Nashville for the album. I just wanted the album to get it in Nashville. And I went in there. It was so bad. I didn't even watch Nashville on like Netflix or anything beforehand. I didn't even prepare. I read my lines like twice. When I went in for the audition, I was still reading the lines on the paper. The guy was like, why aren't you looking at me? I'm like, I didn't know I was supposed to be looking at you. Don't tell my agents, but I don't deserve to be here. They told me to prepare a song because it's a musical show, so I prepared a song. I prepared the song from Hercules. The one where the goat sings. <laughs> to Hercules. You know what I'm talking about? I've given up hope that someone would come along. A fellow who'd ring the bell for once, not the gong. You know, some country western. And <laughs> they say the biggest fear of every artistic person is that one day the world's going to discover that you're a fraud. I can tell you from experience, it's not so bad. <laughs> And after two and a half years of failed auditions, they dropped me. Well, not technically. They put me on what they called the back burner. I think that is a poor choice of words because I own a back burner and it is still used occasionally. I would still return my back burner's emails if my back burner had a computer. <laughs> hey man, how you doing? Hey, pretty good, Backburner. How you doing? Pretty good. Just want to let you know I got some soup on here for you. <laughs> Sweet. What kind of soup? Just some tomato soup. Oh, I love tomato soup. <laughs> Put some grilled cheese in there. Maybe just some peppers. The best. Yeah, I love tomato soup too. LOL, 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 LOL. I love you. Oh, well, I didn't mean to say I love you. What? Oh, that's weird. I think my Backburner might have feelings for me. Because we're recording this, I want to state for the record that I have no ill will towards my agents. They're great men. And I say that because it's true and also just in case they want to take me back. <laughs> I am ready. I am willing. I'll be staying at a nice motel in L.A. Just follow the smell. 